Shadu Abu Khan gen neba. Tarida at Kais ge asida di Kai. I was just saying that our strength is in who we are. Tiragea Nakama go ho up kingas. I was saying I am the paramount chief, the great eagle. I am from the Korakona, which means Korana nation, from the tribe, the Karama, in the Eastern Cape, which is the left standing kingdom. And our clan is the Kurikwa clan. Di Korakona. Um, I am Kaukop Hami or Chief Hami um, in Korakobab, which is our native um, tongue. Um, Hami translates to lion. It's my spiritual animal and it's my cultural name. Um, I am from Koha. I am a part of the left standing kingdom, or also known as the Lynx Royal House, and um, I am part of the Korana nation. My name is Joanne, my surname is Opperman, and I'm the Tarase because I'm the chief's wife. You know, a lot of us lost our identity along the way. Lots of people don't know where they're coming from, they don't know their culture. The culture, uh, if, if I can call it, was disadvantaged. Uh, so now we can advance our children to be in future what we didn't get. Remember, we are a community that share public space with other communities that might not be Koranas or indigenous people. So it's very important for us to display our customs and our customary laws that we are different. And please believe me, we are different. Firstly, we are not coloreds. We have an identity. Tita, Tarita, In terms of our culture, it also, if, if one has to go on to the social media platforms, you'll notice that um, certain uh, uh, um, messages are being projected in social media relating to um, us as a people and our cultures. I'm Zulu and I come from a background where I know a lot of about my culture and even if I didn't know much about my culture I can just go to the internet, ask my parents, watch some movies about it because there's so much representation that we have gotten as the Zulu people or the Zulu nation uh, because we are a very large group in South Africa uh, so information about us is widely available but for the Kurana people uh, or the Kurana community, the Kurana tribe they don't have that. They don't have that representation and they don't have that much of media coverage, if any media coverage at all. So I wanted to be that voice or at least try to be that voice that uh, would represent them in the way that they would want to be represented and how they would want to be perceived in the media. We'll be, great, be afforded the opportunity to represent correctly because there's two versions and, and um, or rather three versions to a story. It's the one version, the opposite version and the correct version. And um, either one of the two will give you the correct version. And um, yeah, so this will afford us the opportunity to portray and, and exhibit the correct version of what our culture represents. So the short film is centered around the rites of passages for two people. Firstly, the female and the male, uh, which particularly are called uh, the Edi Dorob for the, the, the young boy transitioning to become a man, and the Ngabab, which is 
the young woman, the, the, the girl becoming a young woman. We were displaying what our customs and customary laws entailed. Remember, in our culture, we have six different nows. The first one is birth. The second one is a naba. The third one is the ididorop. The fourth one is marriage. The fifth one is leadership now, and the sixth one is funeral or burials. Before starting this filming process, I didn't know much about the Karana people or who they were. The only people that I know from the Karana community were the Chief Hami and the Paramount Chief. And those were the only people that I know from the community. And even though I knew them prior filming, I didn't know much or anything about the Karana culture. Uh, but from the shooting process, what I've learned about them is that they are a group of indigenous people um, who form part of the Khoi, Korana, Asan, and uh, basically the indigenous people. They form part of the indigenous people, the First Nation, if you will. Okay, so upon our arrival in PE, um, the chief, um, he kept on looking at me and I was kind of expecting it to get to this point that he would ask this question. But he, he basically asked me whether I am colored or whether, I am, whether I'm African. Um, and in my response, first of all, in, first of all, thinking about re my response first, um, he kind of like declined it and he basically questioned my identity and asked me, you know, where am I from then if I'm not African? Um, but originally then I am wanting to say that I'm coloured. person has been coloured, distance himself from his origin. Because when you're from China, you are Chinese. When you're from Japan, you are Japanese. Even when you're from Britain, you are British. So when you're from Africa, you are African. And how that made me feel, it, it kind of made me feel like my opinion didn't matter. My voice almost didn't matter in that moment. Um, I basically felt as if I almost had absolutely no say as to whatever the question was because he already had decided what my answer was for me. Yeah. Am I colored or am I, I felt Corana? the heat and I wasn't even no, the one who was being addressed. Like, was lost, I was <laughs> you were not the target market. I, I was not the target market. I, I was. I was the target market. Yeah. And but, like, like, but like... Slow down. I think it was, <laughs> I think it was uh, the approach. Yeah. He yeah. was very stern I about it. I think it was yeah. the approach more than anything. Said. But I also think, you know, as a person, he's very stern. There was no need. Mm. He's very stern and like... Yeah. Very, um, like, he, he has his, his team. Like, like we then just decided to meet up with them in PE for a physical um, meet up. So okay, fine. PE trip happened, and um, it was a success at the end. And I say that it was a success because by the end of that trip, we now had like um, a shared vision right we knew that okay this is what they want this is what we want and this is how we're going to incorporate it together so in as much as we had like all of those fears you know and just being unsure and whatnot but when we got there they loved our ideas and things were now like smooth sailing right so then obviously sharp now we have to like go back to the drawing board just to make sure that you don't get into and stuff like that and then now we had to like start preparing for the Ntlambe trip. The, what are we doing again? We're doing the difficulties leaving as well as the difficulties oh. during the car. So here then, um, here's a book here that says narrative, not narrative. Okay, I'll just... 
day one of shooting in Port Alfred, we're still in Grahamstown. Um, yeah. Oh, also, on day one, the initial challenge was we got there because it's winter, it gets dark quite quickly. So I would say um, because of the problems that we had before leaving with the food, not knowing like if we're going to get food and all that. And having to find the place that alone took us a really long time, you know, crossing rivers and crossing all of these mountainous terrains. And it was just so hectic. It, there was a lot that went on. Um, and it was like kind of like we all had each other to rely on. Um, but at the same time, we weren't sure what we are going to expect when we got there. Water, Amanzi. Are you going to be able to grab here? Okay. I think so you should go that side. Situation right now, we are stuck. We are stuck. We are stuck. Literally here, yeah, and see his car can't take this. So, um, we got there late, which was like the first challenge. We got there late, and us arriving late means that we had less time in terms of um, shooting because obviously it quickly got dark. We were supposed to get there at three, but I think we only got there like at four, if I'm not mistaken. The other challenge is that sort of like came along the way especially when we like got there was the fact that i feel like we didn't do enough research about these people like these people uh what type of people are they you know um in terms of dressing how are we supposed to get there for me i was very panicky because you don't want to step into someone's space and feel like you're disrespecting them in any way you want to kind of like come to someone's home, you follow their rules type of thing. So you kind of want to respect that. We already broke like 10 rules just by arriving the way we arrived. We drove in like that and we were supposed to be fetched that side and we were just like, we already thing just for us to speak. So me and Amanda can stay here and just behind the scenes. Since it's in a Sinaba Fazi, there's literally only men. There's literally only men there. So, Luanda, we have some gifts. Um, we, we, can't, we came bearing gifts, so we basically are going to be giving it to the spokesperson. I forgot uh, the title of the person, but essentially the person is going to take these, give it to the chief, the chief will nod, and... Yeah. When we did arrive and we found the men at the fire pit, we, being me and Amache, the women and the crew, basically kind of took it as like a signal not to go within that area. So we kind of let Lance and Luanda do the introductions and the handing over of the gift because we weren't really sure if it would be appropriate for us as women to like go there. Amache and I are literally here. Um, the men obviously cooking. We saw when we got here, it was only men gathered around the fire pits talking. So we thought maybe it would be a bit inappropriate or disrespectful if me and Amasha went to talk and introduce ourselves. So Lance and we yeah, yeah. went, and we're basically waiting for them to like finish talking. I'm not even sure if we can start filming and taking out equipment if it's gonna be disrespectful. Like we just have all these question marks and we just don't know. And we don't want to be disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah, and also wearing pants, and the girls here are wearing dresses, dresses. and skirts. So, so <laughs> it's just yeah, we were not prepared for this, you know. Um, but yeah, we we'll just try to make the most out of it. I, I just feel like also though it's not entirely on us. Maybe we could have asked, but it's okay. Um, it's time to go shoot now. Right now we're just getting ready to actually film and it's kind of scary because they seem to have like so much high expectations of us. So really hoping that we're going to do them justice but 
fingers crossed that we actually reach the expectations. You are our voices and our faces because really you're going to tell our story for the world to see. We appreciated, firstly, the fact that they had like a script um, ready. So we thought that, oh, this is going to go fast, you know. We started filming and the girls that we were working with, because they were doing the ngabap, they didn't know their lines, you know. And okay, fine, they tried, they tried, they tried, but they were kind of still failing. Actually. <gasps> We didn't grow up in this culture and like like we like I said we we learned about our culture recently and the language like it's foreign for us as well but we're trying. So on day two we actually realized that the other challenge was the language barrier in terms of the fact that they speak Afrikaans and we don't speak Afrikaans, you know. So we realized that at first they were actually more comfortable speaking Afrikaans instead of speaking English with us, you know, because at the end of the day, they are also about representation and just being proud in the language that you speak, you know. So luckily for us, Lance was there because he's colored, he speaks Afrikaans. So he was like, the bridge between us and the Korana people. The discussion with her as well. Um, after, as a klage plant, isn't it? Yeah. After the stuff up is burnt or whatever. No gebeerai praat in die hut en of waar gebeerai. So now everything is going to happen in the hut now. Mm. Everything. Are we filming that? What the talk? <laughs> Having to be the middleman between my crew who unfortunately do not speak Afrikaans, um, and then these Karana people who have Afrikaans as their home language. Um, so those were kind of the difficulties that I endured. And personally, individually, that became a problem because I basically happened to take over the role as a director, which wasn't my intention and it wasn't my duty to do so either. I'm going to start by saying the project itself and the cause itself is bigger than how I feel and how everybody felt. So. I firstly appreciate the fact that he stepped in uh, without anybody having to ask him and go to him and um, ask him to be that bridge between us and the Qur'ana people because they felt comfortable talking or at least they felt more comfortable talking to him because their home language, quote unquote, is um, Afrikaans and he speaks Afrikaans and personally as a director I can't speak Afrikaans nor do I understand it and he does so for that I appreciate it. Um, but how it made me feel, I felt like he was op overstepping because it was my idea in the first place and I'm the one who picked this crew. So I felt like him coming in and stepping in and taking my role was him overstepping. When we cut, we'll put them together. Also, but, but she, the I don't know cuts, what's no, wrong. Okay, the jump cuts. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. But, I mean, at the end of the day, um, there was a project at hand and he was the right person in that moment. So we kind of just went with it because, I mean, we're all trying to achieve one thing. And for that, um, I, feel, I feel like we just, you know, just worked together and collaborated to uh, finish this project and everything was fine in the end. So day two, uh, we were filming the um, Iridorop. And while we were filming it, so it's a ritual that involves like a boy becoming a man. So because it was a, like a reenactment, we didn't think that it would be a chain smash for us to be there, um, only because it was a reenactment. But um, we were aware that it's a sacred thing, you know, it's an um, intimate thing that not, women are not allowed to go to. But again, because it was a reenactment, we thought it was going to be fine. 
So while we're shooting, um, the Paramount Chief says, you know, like, your crew, referring to me and Amache, are not supposed to be here. But because it's just acting, it's fine. But that kind of made us a bit uncomfortable. And I'm sure, like, we felt like, I'm sure everyone else was uncomfortable being that, like, it was men only there. Um, if he felt uncomfortable, probably the other men there felt uncomfortable. So we decided to remove ourselves from the situation and we left and kind of stood off to the side or the distance. Like we kind of went a bit far away and just let Leander and Lance yet again do the filming and take over on that part. I'm so tired. Hello. Day three and I'm just like, I just want yeah. to get it done. Okay, Sunday. I think from the beginning it just felt chilled because we just had to do the interviews which I felt went mostly smooth. Um, but uh, Sunday was less stressful, I would say, and that's when I was able to like relax and actually take in everything. Sunday was good. Um, Sunday was really, really good. Having to know that, okay, actually what we came to do here, we were able to like um, accomplish it, you know. That really, really felt good. And um, when we, when we did leave, however, you know, all of that was yes in the back of my mind. But when we left, I was like, we actually, we managed to pull this off really well. We managed to do a good job at this. And if we just spent like three days with them, but it was just a beautiful sight to see, and that on its own made me want even more to actually like represent these people, regardless of. All of these challenges that we faced, the miscommunication, the arriving late, all of that. But just being present in that space, being present in that moment, it was worth it. You guys are so good. Really, I really want to compliment you. Really. By telling our story to the public. Because if it's not for people like you, then people won't know we still exist. Nani, sekwa veke, haka veke kwa ha kam ha kangua korip tia che ha kasen kwapsi kobab tikara sache kobab tikara ta ab kobab ada kahuda tikwedu. That basically translates to um, six days a week, four weeks a month. Um, 12 months a year. Let us continue to study the reading and writing both of our language and not let it become lost to us, you, my people. That was a direct message um, to make sure that um, the existence of Kora culture, the existence of uh, Kora as a language, uh, Kora Kobab, does not die out without making sure that it continues to exist. Kayayo, Kayayans. Oh, that's it, dear Lord.